Barfoot's test is a biochemical test very similar to the Benedict's and Fehling's tests. However, unlike these two tests, which can only detect the presence of reducing sugars in general, the Barfoot's test can distinguish reducing monosaccharides from reducing disaccharides. It is therefore used to detect the presence of monosaccharides in a sample. Before we delve into the main subject of this video, here's a quick recap on sugar classification and the difference between reducing and non-reducing sugars. Sugars, also known as carbohydrates, are classified into four major categories. Monosaccharides are the simplest carbohydrates and are the building blocks for the other three types of sugars. Monosaccharides can be aldoses or ketoses. An aldose is a monosaccharide with a free aldehyde group at one of the terminal carbons. A ketose is a monosaccharide with a free ketone group per sugar molecule. All monosaccharides are called reducing sugars because they contain hemiacetal or hemiketal groups which are in equilibrium with an open chain aldehyde or ketone group respectively and can therefore act as powerful reducing agents in certain biochemical reactions. However, for a keto sugar to become a reducing sugar, it has to first tautomerize into aldehyde containing aldose sugars via an enediol intermediate, as can be seen here with fructose as an example. Disaccharides are classified as a reducing and non-reducing. A reducing disaccharide has a free hemiacetal group in one of the two constituent monosaccharides which acts as the reducing sugar. This hemiacetal group, just like in the monosaccharides, is in equilibrium with an open chain aldehyde and can therefore act as a reducing agent. However, reducing disaccharides are not as strong a reducing agent as monosaccharides and takes a longer time to show a positive test with Barfoot's reagent. This difference in reaction time is exploited in the Barfoot's test to help distinguish monosaccharides from reducing disaccharides. Barfoot's test is named after the Danish chemist Christian Thomson Barfoot, who invented the test reagent. The Barfoot's reagent is made up of 0.33 molar copper acetate in a dilute 1% aqueous solution of acetic acid. It is therefore a low pH reagent, unlike Fehling's and Benedict's reagent, which are alkaline in nature. Do check out my video on how to prepare the Barfoot's reagent by clicking on the link given in the screen right now or the link given in the description below. Monosaccharides being strong reducing agents usually react within a couple of minutes even in the acidic medium of the reagent, which is not conducive for reduction reactions to occur. Reducing disaccharides on the other hand are comparatively weaker reducing agents and take about 10 minutes to give a positive reaction with the acidic Barfoot's reagent because besides being weak reducing agents they need to first get hydrolyzed into their constituent monosaccharide units in the acidic medium of the reagent. The formation of a brick red color due to the formation of cuprous oxide is regarded as a positive Barfoot's test. The difference in the time taken for the appearance of the precipitate is thus an effective indicator to also help distinguish reducing monosaccharides from reducing disaccharides. When a reducing monosaccharide or disaccharide is mixed with Barfoot's reagent, the cupric acetate in the reagent is reduced into cuprous oxide which gives a brick red precipitate. The reaction that takes place in a positive Barfoot's test is as seen here. The Barfoot's test nevertheless comes with its own limitations. This test cannot be used to detect sugar in urine because urine contains chloride ions, which might interfere with the reaction. Also, if a higher concentration of non-reducing disaccharides is present in a sample, it might give a quick positive result, thus giving the impression that monosaccharides are present in the sample. This is probably one of the most significant drawbacks of the Barfoot's test because non-reducing disaccharides such as sucrose, if present in higher concentrations, can easily give a positive result as it eventually gets hydrolyzed by the acid present in the reagent during the test. In this video, we'll demonstrate positive and negative reactions of the Barfoot's test using monosaccharides, reducing disaccharides, and non-reducing disaccharides as our test samples. To perform this test, we'll need the following. Barfoot's reagent. 
test samples consisting of 1% solutions of a reducing monosaccharide such as glucose, a reducing disaccharide such as lactose or maltose, a 0.5 or less than 0.5% solution of a non-reducing disaccharide such as sucrose, and a control sample of pure distilled water. Four clean, dry, identical test tubes. Water bath. Five graduated droppers or pipettes of one or two ml capacities. Test tube stand. Test tube holder. To begin the test, take the four labeled test tubes in the test tube stand. Add one ml each of the test sample and the control sample, which is distilled water. The concentration of the non-reducing disaccharide sucrose sample should not exceed 0.5 or 1%. Add 1 ml each of Barfoid's reagent to the four tubes and mix them well. Keep the test tubes in the water bath for 1 to 2 minutes, but not more than 2 minutes. Note down the appearance of color in the test tubes after 1 or 2 minutes. We can see that the tube containing the reducing monosaccharides forms a brick red precipitate during the two minutes of boiling. The tube containing the non-reducing disaccharide also forms scanty brick red precipitate on prolonged standing. And if the tube containing the reducing disaccharide lactose or maltose is boiled for an additional 10 minutes or so, it also eventually forms a brick red precipitate as can be seen here. The rest of the tubes do not form any colored precipitates. This demonstrates the use of Barfoud's reagent to detect monosaccharides in a sample. It also demonstrates the ability of the reagent to distinguish monosaccharides from reducing disaccharides in the difference of time taken for the precipitate to develop in both types of sugar samples. This is all about the Barfoud's test to detect and distinguish monosaccharides from reducing disaccharides. Do check out my other biochemical test videos and my reagent preparation videos by clicking on the end screen card shown on the screen right now or the various links given in the description below. Thanks for watching.